Good morning. It is 9.58 a.m. on Sunday, September 16th, 2018. I'm Christiana Ellis, and I just got up. This is five more minutes. I'm a little under the weather right now. I just had a cough drop, so hopefully my voice will, you know, persevere through what's necessary here. <laughs> that makes it sound like an, an ordeal or something. Uh, but today, because it's Sunday, I am continuing my rewatch of The Melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya with the climax of the arc known as The Endless Eight. Uh, so this was technically, when you think about the show in chronological order, this would have been episode 19. Um, you know, and we've been watching kind of in a crazy order, uh, which, you know, in hindsight, it's just one of those questions of like, I don't know that there's a definitive order that's one better than another. But with the conclusion of uh, The Endless Eight, that's another, was another arc that, uh, so I, I didn't discover the show when it was brand new, but um, certainly by the time that I watched this arc, it was already available to me in a way that I could just go right through the endless eight and not have to wait week to week. Uh, and so I could definitely imagine the frustration of fans watching it week to week, not in like, what are they doing? And I think we have to like, to my mind, the arc ends on a high note, but I can definitely, I think we can acknowledge that if, if we look at the overall uh, effect of the series, right, of the, um, if we, the, of the arc, right, uh, I don't think it's fully effective. I think it does some interesting things. I, I mean, I love the show generally, but I think that this arc tried some interesting stuff that was not altogether successful. I think that it was, would have been better to either have fewer episodes instead of eight or to just find more ways to vary them. Especially, you know, the, there's a reason that I did three through seven all in one go because they're just really not very different from each other at all. It's just these tiny little subtle differences. Now that said, the fact that repeating it and trying to actually induce that feeling of frustration we have does have the interesting side effect of making us feel trapped with the characters in a way that probably if we made the episodes more different from one another, we might not feel the same way. And so it's a dilemma. But in the end, uh, you know, what we have in episode eight of the Endless Eight is an episode that for most of its, you know, run uh, is essentially the same as three through seven were. You know, we're following essentially the same trajectory. We learn that this is the 15,532nd repetition of the arc. And, uh, you know, there's uh, some interesting numerology. If you look up some of the trivia for this whole thing, we can learn uh, that, you know, the, the reasons behind some of the numbering are kind of interesting. Like, so for example, uh, this, as I mentioned before, if we were going the whole series in chronological order, which is the way season two was broadcast originally, this is episode 19. And it is the ninth new episode of the uh, you know, of the season. Um, but, uh, so for example, I'm looking at some of the trivia here. So if the loop count, the last episode of Endless Eight and the, and, uh, the, the series of numbers, 15,532, 15532. Um, uh, apparently if you find that sequence of digits in pi, the first instance of the sequence occurs on the 74,532nd digit, not including the decimal point, 
Um, well, I don't know that one. I, I'm reading some of these. Some of them are more interesting than others. Um, but so, for example, I, I, you know what? Um, both uh, in the poker hand at the end, both uh, hands uh, can add up to. You know what? I, this is not as interesting as I was thinking when I started to say it. The point is, ultimately, that we finally learn um, what it takes to break out of this pattern. And it is something that, you know, we, we talked about the themes of all the repetition last time and how even though Haruhi is not always as aware or able to sense, pick things up from other people uh, as could be desired. Uh, she does express multiple times, you know, asking people, is there anything else that you wanted to do? No? Okay, then. And so that crucial moment that we've seen at the end so many times is... Her saying, we have one more day, we did everything on the list, anybody else? Anything? No? Okay then, I guess you have the last day off. And it's this moment that we've seen again and again where she asks everybody, looks around the table, and because of everybody, it's this vicious cycle where everyone's feeling like, we failed to think of the extra thing that we need to do to satisfy her, resulting in them responding to that question with defeat instead of, you know, encouragement or gratitude or whatever. And we can understand why that would be if they feel like they're stuck in this repetition, but we can also put ourselves in Haruhi's shoes of, even though obviously she's very pushy a lot of the time, she also, you know, her pushiness was focused around trying to have everybody have as much fun as possible with uh, repeated expressions of, does anybody else have suggestions for what we would want to do and we can all do it together? Wouldn't that be great? And they don't really contribute. So finally, one of the other repetitions we'd seen over and over again is the conversation where they're doing their own fireworks, where Kion asks Haruhi about her own summer homework. And very consistently, we hear from him a sense that he thinks that this, his home, own homework isn't done, and we know that it isn't done. We've seen him over and over again decide on his last day to not finish it. And his expression to her, like, have you done yours? And, of course, she has. And so the conversation ends. But then, finally, he is in that crisis moment again. She's just about to walk out the door. We've seen it so many times where he just couldn't say anything. But this time, he's finally able to pull it together. And it's such this catharsis moment that he ends up being a very demanding and saying, no, we're not all taking the day off tomorrow. I have to finish my homework. Koizumi's homework isn't done yet. Probably Yuki's isn't done yet, although that's a weird assumption uh, that he would make, but whatever. And he basically says everyone, and he lists everyone except Haruhi, uh, demanding that they come over and, and finish all of their homework together as a team. And then... Haruhi is furious that he's just going to be so demanding and order everybody around when it's her job as the brigade leader to give orders and she's just lecturing him and poking him in the chest and then, and then finishes that whole thing with like, I want to come too. And honestly, my own feelings is like that moment really makes all of everything that came before on the Ep uh, Endless Eight worthwhile, personally. Not everyone's going to feel the same, but that moment is joyful for me. Um, because For a couple of reasons. Like, one, it's this recognition that we they've finally broken free from the trap. But what it also represents, what it took to break free from the trap was 
Kion standing up for himself a little bit, expressing his own need instead of just submitting to whatever Hari he says he want, she wants and then complaining about it. Now, we know that obviously the, re the relationship between them is complex. Like there's a lot of times where he... What we've seen over and over in this series is that she orders him around and she frequently doesn't listen to him when he complains about stuff. But what we also see a lot is him complaining, but doing it anyway. Over and over and over again where he complains about stuff, but does it anyway. He never actually kind of stands up to her, you know, her for the most part. And, you know, it's only rare occasions that he, does, he actually tells her no. Um, but in this case, even though it's, it's a slightly different situation for him to finally express to her that he has a need of his own and he wants to have it met. And especially when this is in the context of, uh, uh, you know, she had just asked everybody if they had something they needed. And it was that hard for him to be willing to express what he needed, which was, we were so busy, I didn't get to finish my homework, and now I need help. And obviously, I think it's funny and feels very true to the characters that her reaction to the way he asks is, <laughs> is to be mad. But it's, it's the... Um, there's a trope in a lot of anime and, of course, other things of uh, tsundere, which is this, uh, it's a type of sort of attitude that is usually applied to female characters, but the basic concept of it is someone who acts kind of mean and aggressive superficially, but it's sort of a cover for real feelings of often love or, and or insecurity. And we, and obviously Haruhi falls into that quite a lot, right? So in this whole idea that the fact that her reaction uh, when he finally stands up for himself here and demands to do the homework is to be mad at the way he asks, but all of that's kind of a cover for, I want to come too, even though she's finished her homework, but she she wants to be with the group as they do it. And... And so then we, we see the after effects of uh, them finishing, you know, the homework with their big study session. And there's a little bit of a post-mortem conversation with Kyon and Koizumi where they just talk about how Haruhi, you know, things like homework always come so easy to her that it just maybe never occurred to her that anyone else would have trouble with it. And so, uh, you know, that can be a failing on Haruhi's part for sure, but it's also incumbent upon the people who need the help to ask for it and so that's kind of uh you know that's that's the culmination of this whole thing is that it kind of forced kion who's such a passive aggressive character um it finally forced him to have to you know set this passivity aside and ask for something and that's what breaks them all out of the trap and i feel like that's what kind of makes it all like the catharsis of this arc is really interesting, even though I think we can acknowledge that the, the long middle chapter is kind of tiresome and maybe didn't need to be so long and so on. But in any event, I like how the Endless Eight ends, even if it wasn't always exciting in the middle. So, that's where we leave things off. Now, what do we have left in the series? Well, there's one episode uh, that's a standalone episode called Bamboo Leaf Rhapsody. And uh, the, the order of episodes, like I've said, is, always, is a little confused at this point. But Bamboo Leaf Rhapsody actually involves time travel. So, uh, that's a fun one to include here. Uh, so that's the next one that we will uh, watch for next week. And then we will complete the, uh, the, you know, the, the final arc of the series so far. 
with the five part, uh, the sigh of Haruhi Suzumiya, and we'll watch those all in order. And then last but not least, we'll do uh, an episode of this uh, for the movie entitled The Disappearance of Haruhi Suzumiya, which is the last bit of, you know, official uh, content so far. I mean, there's, you know, constant rumors, I guess, of a third season, but, you know, I, I'm not sure it'll ever happen. Certainly not at this point. But uh, in any event, next week, Bamboo Leaf Rhapsody. So in the meantime, I will talk to you all tomorrow for five more minutes. <laughs>